Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to make feather earrings. So what I did to make these is I took the technique that I used to make my tassels. And if you haven't seen my tassel video, I will leave the link for it down there in the description bar, so go check that out. I took the technique that I used to make my tassels, and I used that same technique to make these feathers. So the first pair I made is right here, and I after I wire wrapped the top of my feather here, I just took and added some seed beads some 80 seed beads around the feathers and then I did a couple more wraps and I did a wire loop here and then I did some wire wrapped beads and I have down here a cherry quartz stick bead that I also wire wrapped the top of it so this was the first pair that I did and after I made this pair I made this pair and these are my favorite I love this pair so much I used artistic wire in the bronze color and it's the most prettiest wire. It's chocolatey brown. I just love it. And I love teal. It's my favorite color and there's pink in here. It's so pretty. And um, these here I just did regular wire loops and I used 60 seed beads. And I used um, crystal quartz points and I did a simple wire wrap on the top because I really wanted to show off the crystal points and I didn't want to cover the top of it. And this pair over here, and I have to tell you, after I made this pair, I love this pair so much, I didn't think that I could top them. And I actually did. Um, these filigrees were sent to me by my Aunt Carol, and all the feathers were sent to me by my other aunt, Evelyn, and they're actually sisters. And um, I was trying to figure out what else could I do other than just this look here. And I realized that I've had these filigrees for a while, and I haven't really done anything with them. So I stacked two filigrees. This is the first one, and then this is the second one here. I stacked them on top of each other onto the feather, and I thought it looked really cool. So it took me a while to figure out how to attach them onto the feather, but I did. So what I did is I made the same loop right here. I did the wire wrapping loop. I didn't do the seed beads, of course, but I just have a little loop here at the bottom with my wire and what I did is I took the filigree here in the top and I attached it to my wire wrapped loop that's on my feather and then I attached it to the ear wire and then with the wire loop that I have right here I took this filigree in a jump ring and I connected it to that loop and then I connected this filigree right here on t to that so it was more still because if I didn't attach it this would be swinging side to side and it, it still has movement to it but it's not crazy swinging all around and um, I really love how it turned out and I could have just left it like that but I decided to add some beads so I have some little beads right here and I just did spiral head pins to make them look even more fancier so for this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to make feather earrings and it's going to be a whole lot of fun Here's the list of materials you will need to make a pair of feather earrings. You will need 20 gauge wire or 22 gauge. You will need feathers, beads of your choice, clear packing tape, super glue, and for your tools you will need wire cutters, chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, flat nose pliers, nylon jaw pliers, scissors, an exacto knife, a ruler, and mandrel pliers. And I'm using the Wubbers brand and I'm using the small mandrel pliers and the large size. So this is the list of materials and remember I always put the material list down there in the description bar so you can see everything and I hope that I'm not forgetting anything. Um, and I know this seems like a, like a lot of materials but you could probably get away without using the nylon jaw and the flat nose if you don't have those. But you will need the chain nose, the round nose, the cutters and if you want um, you can just use regular ear wires, but I'm going to show you how to make ear wires with the mandrel pliers. So that's why I'm using these here. So here is another pair of earrings that I made, and I'm not really happy with these. Um, I forgot to show them to you in the first video because the earrings that you saw on my little display, that's all I could fit in there, and I had these sitting to the side, so I forgot about them. Anyways, I'm not happy with these because of this wire here. It just looks really strange to me. From a distance, you could see the cold wire. I don't know, it just 
to me, it looks strange. Um, what I think I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to find, try to find, some 60 seed beads that I can put onto wire and I'll connect them here to the jump rings and maybe it'll hide the coiled wire and it will be more interesting. I don't know. I hope that I have some beads to match these. Anyways, these come three in a pack so I use three for one earring since they were so small and I love the polka dot feather. It's really pretty. Okay, so this is just another pair I made. Now, the first thing we have to do um, when you get these feathers, I'm thinking that these are really old. It says 99 cents for three of them. I don't know if the pricing is still like that. I know you can get feathers from the craft store and I want to say they're probably in the kids section, but I don't know. You'll just have to run around the craft store and find out. So anyways, when I used these feathers and these earrings, there's this purple tape that's around them and they weren't really secure in the tape. They fell right out. So I had to take all of them apart and um, re-tape them myself and glue them together. So here are the ones I'm going to be working with in the video. And they come two in a pack. These ones do. The uh, pink blue and purple ones also came two in a pack by the way so anyways these came two in a pack and if you look at all of them they're all different yeah they have the same colors going on but I mean for example look at this one here it's really long compared to the other ones this one here is missing a hole in the feather this one over here is missing a hole in the brown feather uh, this one here is probably the nicest one. There is a little mark right there, but that's not bad at all, actually. So this one's probably the prettiest. Now, to me, that drives me crazy that they all kind of look different. So what I like to do is I take an X-Acto knife. Now, these are glued really well into this tape. They're very secure in here. They don't slide out like the other ones do. And what I do is I just take and I cut the tape open. I'm not going to use this one because... This one looks so different than all the other ones. I think that these three here look more alike. What I'm going to do is get rid of the brown feather. I'm going to take that out because I'm going to be using these black beads. Okay, So I'm going to take the brown out. And what I do is, and I think that I should um, cut all three of them open because I like these two yellow ones. And... I think that this purple one and this purple feather is more similar. And these two green ones, feathers, look better than this one. This one's really thin and these are thicker. So I'm going to cut into all of these. And what I do is I just flip this over to the back and I take the X-Acto knife and I cut into this. Cut a straight line. Do not cut sideways because you'll cut the feathers. And if you stay at a straight line, when cutting it, you won't cut the feathers, okay? So just cut that tape open there. And I just go ahead and peel it open, just like this. Now, when they put these in here, they left all the downy feathers, the really fluffy feathers, in with the at the top of the quill. And I really feel like that's why maybe the other ones, because the other ones that kept falling apart, maybe that's why they're falling apart or they're just old. But anyways, I cut those away with my scissors because if you don't, when you go to do your wire wrap loops, it'll be really thick, okay? So I'm just going to open this up and pull these feathers out. Hold the quills and pull the tape away. Okay, then I could start pulling the feathers out. So here's my brown feather, which I don't want for this. I'll leave the brown feather for another project later. Here's my green one. Oh, I think these are tied together. They are. There's a thread on this one. I noticed that the all the other ones I had didn't have this tie. They were tied with thread. But the uh, pink, purple, and blue ones had it. Okay, I'm just going to slide that green one out. And I don't know if I got it yet. I got it cut yet. I think it's just a little bit there. Yep, okay. 
Now I'm going to take these apart. Okay, so you can see all this fluff here. All of this fluff is garbage. Can't really do anything with that. Okay, I'm just going to clean this up. Okay, so now you can see my feather here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing to those two also. Now if you look at this feather, see all the, the fluffy stuff up here next to the quill? I'm going to trim that off because it's going to make it very difficult to wire wrap this. So I'm going to trim it off about a quarter of an inch. Just like that. Do not cut the quill. Be very careful. Okay. See that I need to trim a little bit more. I may have to go get my other scissors. I've had these ones forever. They're probably dull. Yeah, I'll get my other ones. Okay, so just like this, this is what I want. So now I have this little quill here that I can wrap my wire around. So now I need to do the same thing to these feathers, to the green one, to the yellow one. I need to trim just a little bit of the fuzz there away. So I can grip my wire into that better. I'm going to do the yellow one. This yellow feather is weird. Actually, I'm not going to use this yellow one because there's a hole in it. So I'm going to set that to the side with my brown feather for another project. So go ahead and do the same thing that I just did to this feather, to these, get them ready so we can turn them into earrings. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera to save time. So I have my feathers ready to bundle now. And the fourth feather that I was not going to use, I decided to take the green one out of it. So I'm going to have two green feathers in both of my um, earrings. And um, to get them the same length, what you want to do, for example, is take the purple feather, stack it on top of the other one. If one is longer, trim the quill, this end, on the longer one, and then trim, you know, the fuzz off with the scissors to get them the same length. I did that for all of my feathers, and they're all the same length. And now what we want to do is to take the clear masking tape, and you want to pull about two to three inches off of it. Trim that off. And then you want to trim quarter inch pieces, about quarter inch pieces, you don't have to measure it. It's about quarter inches long, or wide, not long. Just like this, and I stick this to the edge of my desk, and I'll do this whole thing because sometimes I'll mess one up and I'll have to come back and get another one. So I like to trim several, okay? So I already have a whole bunch trimmed, and what I'm gonna do is take round nose pliers, I'm going to get a piece of tape, okay, I'm going to grab the corner of the tape, just like this with my round nose pliers. Now I've tried doing this with my fingers and it was a nightmare, and I found after doing this several times, the easiest way to do it is with round nose pliers, okay. So you can see I'm holding the edge of my tape there. I'm just going to go like this and fold it onto itself and make a tube, okay? And then I have to pull this off, okay? And then I'm going to continue rolling this tube. I'm not going to use all the tape. I'm just gonna roll it like this and it will come over the edge and I don't want it to be that far over the edge. So I'm just gonna stop right here and I'm going to trim this off, my extra. OK. 
Okay. Just like that. So now I have this little t tube for my quills to go into. Let me set this off to the side. I'm going to take my super glue. And by the way, you want to have your feathers ready to stick in your tube. Mine are ready. Okay. So here is my little tube. I'm going to hold it just like this. I can actually trim this just a little bit because I have a sharp corner there. Okay. Now I'm going to get my super glue and I got to be careful that I don't spill it on top of my feathers. And I'm going to put it inside this tube. Okay, you want to put it in the end, but you're going to put the feathers in. So you can see my glue right there. And then I'm going to grab all of my feathers at one time. And I have four. Just like this. Make sure they are even. And I'm going to shove them into my little tube. Just like that. And right now you want to make sure that they are all pushed in there all the way to the very end of the tube until it touches your finger because we need them to be even. Okay? And now I'm going to set this aside and let it dry and it does take a little while. It, it's not instant. I don't know if it's this name brand of super glue but it does take a little while and we need this to be dry because if it's not dry and we go to wire wrap on this it's going to be a nightmare okay so I'm just going to go ahead and do the other one off camera okay so there we go so while I'm waiting for my glue to dry I'm going to go ahead and do my little beaded dangle I went ahead and I straightened up my wire with my nylon jaw pliers and now I'm going to make my dangle and I'm going to use these six millimeter round bead first. I'm going to make my wire loop. Okay, just like that. Slide this down. And now I want my loops to be on the opposite side of each other. So the, I have one loop going this way, so I want my other one to go this way. And I like working straight off the spool like this because I don't waste as much wire. It's a big wire saver tip for you. Okay, so there's my new loop. Now I'm going to take my cutters and trim this. And then shape my loop. Okay, just like that, and I want to make sure that they are not the same. I want to make sure they're opposite. So I have one loop going this way and one loop going that way. Okay, so now I'm going to do my big 8 millimeter bead, but I have to have a fresh cut there in my wire. So I'm putting on my 8 millimeter, and I'm going to make another loop okay just like that put my round nose pliers back in there so I have this then I'm gonna slide my bead down I have one loop going this direction so I want my other loop to go in the opposite direction so I bent it like this then I'm going to make another loop okay My whole spool just came unraveled. Okay, so now I have this. I'm going to cut this right here. I dropped my cutters last night, so I bent the tip on them, which really stinks because they're not old. They're newer cutters, okay? So I just cut my wire. Now I'm going to take my chain nose, flatten that out, and then... Close this end. 
I'm gonna close my other end okay just like that and now I'm going to open up one of them in this direction twisting it open and I'm going to put my other bead on and close that shut okay so now I have my eight millimeter and my six millimeter and now I have to do my big black bead here so there we go but aren't those beads cool I think they're called miracle beads only have a few of them they're like glowing they really look neat from a distance Now I'm going to show you how to do this wrap, and by the way, this is the same exact wrap that I did on the crystal quartz points and also the cherry quartz stick bead. Okay, so what you're going to do is take your wire and straighten it with your nylon jaw pliers, and then once it's straightened, you want to measure and cut 8 inches of wire, which I've already done, and then what you're going to do is take your bead and slide it on. And about right here, maybe an inch and a half, you want to bend your wires up, okay? And you want to bend both sides, okay? Just like this, till they cross. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round nose, and the wire that's shorter, I'm going to grab it, just like this and I kind of want to grab it not right here but a little further up maybe here and then bend it okay like this and then I'm going to grab the wire and it's a little tricky to do because my other ones in the way I'm gonna grab it like this and I'm going to make a wrapped loop okay and by the way this wire I'm working with is kind of hard to bend it's not the easiest one this was much easier to do with the artistic wire which I should have used because it's easier to film when the wire is easier to bend but I decided to go with this gold because my artistic wire is a different shade of gold okay so I'm just gonna do a wrapped loop get this out of my way I need my chain nails there they are. I'm only going to wrap it like two times. Good. Grab it one more time because I'm going to come in here and wrap my longer wire around it. Okay, so I'm almost there. Okay, there's my second time around. Now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off this little piece of wire okay and it looks good I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I need this to be going in this direction okay like that my loop because of how I'm going to hang it onto my feather and I'm gonna push this over and I want my wire to wrap right around underneath those last wraps there okay so I'm just gonna get it into place and start wrapping and I need to be careful take your time Alicia if you go fo fast you're gonna break the bead okay so just like that we got our first wraps keep going wrapping under the last wrap Okay, just like this. And do this until all of your wire is gone. And it's okay if it's a little messy. It actually looks really nice. I like the messy wire wrap look. And for these earrings, it really does look good. Okay, so I just have a little bit to go. And if you want, you can come in here with a nylon jaw and from this angle, squeeze this gently. Okay, I'm going to take my chain nose, pull it tight, and do the last wrap. And I'm going to bend this in like this. Okay, and then I'll take 
and carefully come in here and press that down careful not to break the bead and then you can come in and you know fiddle with it get it how you want it to look I did have a little strange spot here my wire went over the other wire but that's okay this is going to be my front because I want my cut off wire in the back this is the back of my other one so there we go now we have two of these complete okay so now I'm going to attach my little dangle on here I'm going to take my chinos and I want it on the side with this uh, not six millimeter eight millimeter I'm just going to put that on and close it shut Okay, so there we go. It's so pretty. I really like that. And this is the front. This is the back where it's cut, and this is the front. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make ear wires. It's so easy to do. So I went ahead and I cut two two inch wires, 20 gauge wire, and I cut them with my flush cutter so the edges are flat. They're not pointed like some cutters do. So now that I have a flush cut on both ends, I'm going to take my small mandrel pliers, and I'm going to use the smaller mandrel, this one's smaller than this one, and I have to pick my wires up, and I'm going to put my wires together, and I need to make sure that they are even, and you could see how flush that cut is there on the wires. I'm going to grab the uh, wires just like this, okay, and my pliers at the very edge, and I'm going to wrap my wire around my mandrel pliers until I have loops just like this okay and now what I'm gonna do is make the big bend here as you could see in my finished ear wire so with my large wubbers I'm going to use this large mandrel here okay so I'm going to put these together again I think I just bent my wires up holding them like that but it'll be okay so I'm going to hold them like this okay see just like this because I'm going to wrap my wire my wires both of them around this so I'm making two ear wires at the same time so holding it tight just like this with my fingers and squeezing the pliers tight I'm going to bend my wires all the way around just like this and I actually like to touch just like that okay and then when you let go they lift up and for me that's perfect so I slide them off and then I hold them just like this and if I have a little bit extra which I do on this one I'll go ahead and flush cut that off okay so holding them even your hand I'm going to flush cut that so now they're even and then I'm going to take my flat nose and this is why I'm using them for this part every time I use my chain nose they're not even so I always use my flat nose pliers so I'm going to grab a little bit of the wire okay hope you could see that about there is good okay hold it tight and bend it like this and there we go we have two beautiful ear wires and if you want you can go ahead and file this uh, to me it doesn't really bother me my flush cutters are pretty nice and I, I really don't care about filing them because I kind of feel like it's not needed okay so now that we have our ear wires made we can go on to our next step And by the way, if you're working with a softer wire, you can put your ear wires onto a nylon bench block and hit them with a nylon hammer to work harder than more. But since I'm working with a harder wire, and when I bend this wire, it really keeps its shape, I'm not worried about using the nylon bench block. But if you find that your wire is too soft, you can use a nylon bench block and a nylon hammer to harden your wire. So I cut eight inches of wire to do my wire wrap around the feather. I'm going to take my round nose pliers and grab the wire about here and bend it in half. OK. 
Okay. I'll bend this one around more. Okay, I'll make this a smaller loop. I'm going to flip this over. And bend it like this. And I may have made that piece there too long. And then what I do is I put it up to this here because I want it to be about the same size as my um, tape. My, the same length as my tape. And it's pretty close. It's just a little bit too big. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, I have my wire, you can see, on this side. I'm going to take and start bending this into a circle. And I found that you don't really want to use the chain nose that much for this. I'm going to use it for this part here. But with this wire, with it being so hard to bend, when I held on to this with the chain nose and wrapped it around, it messed it up and I had to redo it. But with the softer wire, I could do it. It was fine. Okay, so I have my little loop that I just made here. This is going to be the, on the front of my feather, by the way, okay? So see how this slides on there? It is a little loose, but I'm going to hold it about here and pull this tight. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to slide this up just a little bit. Don't let it pop out on you. And I don't go to the very edge because if I do, it will pop out on me. Okay, so hold it about right here. And I want this to be my front. So as you can see, this loop is on the front of my feather. Okay, and I'm going to hold it here. Pull this tight. I'm going to hold this still. And I'm going to start wrapping. And it fell out. And this is one of the battles that I've had with doing this. Is it falling out? Okay. So I'm going to hold it like this. I'm going to take my chain nose. And I'm going to close this up just a little bit very gently squeeze that shut okay and then continue the wrapping once you get like four wraps it will be easier to do and this is spinning on me so I have to spin this back because it'll get stuck like this if I don't. And I think it's already getting stuck, but I'll figure it out. Okay, I'm going to continue wrapping. If I can at least get a couple more wraps in there. Okay. So there you could see I got three wraps. I'm going to take my chain nose, come in here, squeeze that together. And as you can see, this is the front, and my feathers are going at an angle. But I'll just bend this loop to make it straight. Okay, so I'm going to keep wrapping. And this is the part that is so annoying to do with this wire because this wire is hard to bend okay so I do like to come in here because of this wire is hard to bend and I squeeze my wraps and I make them look nicer now if you're using artistic wire you won't have this problem and by the way this is called Doris and my aunt also sent me this wire and look how cheap it is but it's really good quality None of it was tarnished. It's all pristine. It's beautiful wire. It's a beautiful color. I think it was just that cheap because she buys stuff in bulk and not just that, but I think she's had it for a long time because she sent me a lot of stuff that she had for years. Okay, so I'm just still wrapping this. I'm going to stop every once in a while and bring these together. And 
sometimes I like to hold it like this and I'll grab my chinos and I'll pull this tight as tight as I can pull it now some of you might think that the tape is slippery and it's gonna slip right out the bottom but what I do is I wrap all the way down here past the tape and it won't do that and again I'm gonna go in here and pull this tight my cat might make a visit by the way he's walking right beside my chair he's getting on the other window so okay I'm gonna flatten this here and again I'm gonna keep wrapping Gosh, this wire is so hard to bend. It wouldn't be so bad if I could hold on to this end, but I know if I do that it'll just mess up on me. Okay, I'm almost there. We want just a little bit extra wire. Don't wrap all the way the wire around. We need just a little bit to do our little loop. Okay, so here I am at the front. I got my loop here. Okay, just like that. I do have to trim that wire that's sticking out. Where's my cutters? See this wire here? It's sticking out just a little bit. Be very careful when you cut it. Now, I did have my quills go down some, and usually I have just a little bit sticking out here, but I couldn't help it because this wire is so hard to bend. It was just automatically doing it to me. But, about right now, where I'm at, there's no tape showing, and there's tape showing because of that. So, what I'm going to do, since I can't wrap around again, I don't have enough wire. I'm going to pull my last wrap really tight. Okay, and that helped. Okay, and now I'm going to make another, or my loop here, and I am wondering, could I go around just one more time? I'm gonna try it. I may have enough wire. again yes I think I have enough wire okay there we go it's perfect now okay so just like this I'm going to take and with my other one, I had so much, the pink one, the pink, purple, and blue one, I had so much fuzz on those that it was getting wrapped around this part here. So I'm going to take what's left over, my wire, and I'm going to make a loop. And this is what my beads are going to be in. Now I'm going to switch over to my chinos. And by the way, you don't want this loop to be flat against your feathers. You want it to stick out just like that because we need movement. All right, so now I'm going to put on my dangle. And let's see, remember I want the cut to be in the back. So this is the front. So it has to hangle, hangle, <laughs> it has to dangle like this. Okay, so I'm gonna just like that. And then I'm going to close this shut. Okay. Looks good. Can you see that? And now I'm going to add my ear wire. I'm going to open this up and put this on. Close it shut. 
And here we go. We have our finished earring. It turned out really nice. Very pretty. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest. Thanks for watching!